welcome back everyone today we are going to be taking up from the last lecture and further discussing how to set up the equation of motion for a dynamic problem so in today's class the first thing that we will going to discuss is basically how to simplify a typical structure or a system to an idealized system that can be utilized for dynamic analysis and that idealization would help us in obtaining the response of such system and first we'll do a single degree of freedom system and we'll discuss what a degree of freedom actually means and then see what is the differential equation for obtaining the dynamic response of a single degree of freedom system okay so let us get started we are going to be starting the first chapter which basically introduces the basic equation of dynamics okay so we are going to be uh, dividing this lecture in three part the first part would be how do we idealize systems for the dynamic analysis okay then the second part would be the components of a dynamic system and then the in the third part we would be setting up the equation of motion okay so coming to the uh, first part which is basically idealization to a simple system or to a system which can be used for dynamic analysis okay uh, as we discussed in the lecture uh, before this one if we want to obtain the response of any structure or any system subject to a non static load then one of the steps that are required is to simplify a structure which can be used in our numerical analysis okay so let me uh, just start by uh, taking example of a building okay so in its very detailed form a building might have multiple floors okay and it might have uh, walls it might have columns okay now if we want to simplify this system for uh, analysis what we need to do depending upon what is the goal of our analysis we might simplify this to a multiple degree of freedom system or what is called multi degree of freedom system mdof okay so what we are going to do we are going to consider the tributary allocation of the mass for example in this case we are going to assume that all this slab is actually situated at this level like this okay, so m1 m2 m3 and then we are going to consider this frame type columns and buildings uh, columns and beams form the component of this mdo uh, representation okay so this is one representation now in this case depending upon whether i am considering my columns and beam to be axially in extensible or not i can further simplify it okay so i can further simplify this system assuming that these columns and beams cannot have axial compression or extension so these are rigid actually so in that case uh, what we'll have uh, if you remember from your uh, structural analysis in general a 2d frame structure would have how many degrees of freedom 3 degrees of freedom at each joint right so i would have 3 degrees of freedom so all of these would be at 3 degrees of freedom however if i want to represent it with the sing uh, with uh, columns and beam that cannot that are basically actually rigid i can further simplify this okay and i can represent it using a single degree of freedom at each level of the 
building so if i have to represent it or let me just go here again i can represent it something like this okay so in this case this these would be k1 q2 k3 that represents the story stiffness and then i have all the mass at different levels which are represented by m1 m2 m3 correct so what i have done let us say this much of wall or i should have like you know drawn three story so this much would go into the second floor this much of would go into the first floor and this would go into the top floor and i have simplified this model to a, a system that can be used for analysis now this was for multi degree of freedom system now depending upon what is the goal of our analysis this can even be simplified to a single degree of freedom system in which the total mass of the building for example like this uh, can be simplified through a single degree of freedom system okay so the total mass is here and then k now you could argue whether this one presentation sdf representation is an appropriate idealization of that system or not well it depends what is the goal of your analysis for example if it's a rigid building and you need to find out just the base shear then perhaps this might work out to be reasonably okay but in many case this might not be an appropriate representation however what we are going to do we are going to start our mathematical formulation with single degree of freedom system and once we have understood the behavior of single degree of freedom system to different kind of loading okay then we are going to see how we are going to idealize a multi degree of freedom system now i've talked or i've mentioned many times degrees of freedom right so i've said like you know degrees of freedom okay so the question comes what exactly is degrees of freedom now for our course or in dynamics in general degrees of freedom represent the number of independent displacement of the mass that are required to represent the displaced position of a body with respect to its original position for example like in this case if i have something like this and how many degrees of freedom would i need to represent the displaced position so let us say there is an horizontal earthquake and i want to represent the position of this one so in general i would only need one degree of freedom to represent the mass with respect to or the position of the mass in the deformed position with respect to its original position okay so that thing you have to keep in mind okay so this is degrees of freedom uh, similarly if i have like you know in multiple degree of freedom remember there could be how many degrees of freedom here one would be for this one would be for this and one would be for this okay so i could have single degree of freedom system or i can have in this case three degree of freedom system or which is like you know a multi degree of freedom system okay so you have to keep in mind that how do we represent degrees of freedom okay so now what we are going to do i'm going to show you some examples okay in which you have to find out how many number of independent degrees of freedom you would require to actually represent the displaced position of masses in the body okay with respect to its original position okay so let us take our first example in our first example i have something like a beam which is pin connected at the left end and then there is a spring at the right end okay in the second one so i'm just going to present all four examples and then we are going to see, uh, uh, go through uh, all of these one by one okay in the second example i have a beam which is 
supported on two springs okay now in the third case i have a pulley mass system okay just going to draw that here okay so i have mass m here and then it goes over pulley which is like this fixed here okay just assume this to be on the top of okay. and then i have another spring coming out to me so let me just redraw it again so i have this spring in between and i have then another mass here okay now similar to this there is also fourth case in which i have similar kind of settle but there is a one uh, small difference or like you know i mean in fact there is a big difference just try it again and then you would know initials this part of the setup is same okay so this part is same okay oh, wait so there is an another spring here which goes over this okay and then there is another spring which comes like this then there is a rigid bar here okay and it is connected pin connected at this point okay and then there is another spring and then there is another bar which is connected here and which is pinned at the this support okay so there are four examples in front of you and you have to find out how many number of degrees of freedom or independent degrees of freedom required for each case to represent the displaced position of a body or in simple it would be just finding out what is what are the degrees of freedom of this system for dynamic analysis okay so at this point of time i would like you to take 5 minutes and just go through each setup one by one and find that out okay all right now let me discuss each problem one by one okay so what i have here there is a remember that all of these are rigid bars right so in the first case if this is constrained to rotate about this point okay so it can only rotate about this point and there cannot be any other movement because bar is rigid okay so the degree of freedom for this is one degree of freedom okay now let us consider the second example in which i have this bar which is supported on these two springs okay now in general this bar can translate and this can also rotate for example if you think let us say it goes it rotates about its center of mass and then it also translates by this much so let us say this is the one degree of freedom and then it rotates about this point so this is another degree of freedom okay so for this to completely represent the displaced position we need two degrees of freedom okay now for the third example okay i have this mass here okay let us call it m1 and this is m2 okay now this mass let us first start by saying the degree of freedom of this mass is u1 now remember whatever this pulley can rotate about this point however if you consider the rotation of this pulley to be independent it is actually not because there is no spring in between so it is not flexible or you can say it is inextensible between these two points so whatever is u1 by the same amount okay the pulley actually rotates related by u1 equal to whatever the radius of pulley times the rotation of pulley so the there is not an independent coordinate here okay however there is again a spring between this point and this point so m2 need to be represented by another degree of freedom okay so in this case again i have two degree of freedom system okay all right now let us come to the fourth example 
In this example, let us again start by saying this is U1, my first degree of freedom system. Now, in this case, if you look at it, this is not, not inextensible between the mass and the pulley. Okay. So, in that case, the rotation of the pulley would be another independent degree of freedom needed to describe the displaced position. So, let us say this pulley is rotated, let us call it theta 1. Okay. Now, whatever theta 1 is here, okay, again, whatever is rotated by this amount, there is a spring in between, okay, and this, the first bar is constrained to rotate about its support, okay. So, I would need another theta 1 here, or let us call it theta 2, and then there is again a spring in between, okay. So, for this case, again I need an independent degree of freedom, theta 3. So, in general, I have 1 u1 and then 3 degrees of freedom, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. This is 4 degree of freedom system. Okay, uh, you could modify this problem a little bit and say if there is no spring in between, for example, right here, then the degree of freedom would reduce by 1 because whatever is theta 1, Okay, this displacement here would be theta 1 times the radius of this pulley. Okay, so uh, it is actually pretty much determined here and the rotation at this point would be, okay, so this one would be theta 1 times the radius of pulley and this rotation would be theta 1 times divided by the whatever the length here is, which is let us say L. Okay, so it is again not independent, so it would reduce a 3 degree of freedom system. Okay. So, I hope now it is clear how do we represent degrees of freedom in a system. Okay, all right. So, now let us move on to different components of a dynamic system. Okay, and let us see how do we simplify a system to a mathematical model which is amenable for mathematical analysis or setting up the equation of motion and in this case I will simply take example of a single story building a frame type building okay so what I want to draw here let me say I have a single story frame here okay something like this okay so as you could imagine it would be in three dimension, but I've just considered in frame saying that all the mass are concentrated along this line. So basically what I'm saying, let us say it would be in three dimension, but I'm assuming that all of this is actually concentrated on this. Okay. All right. So let me just go ahead and uh, delete this. Okay. So that now, as you can imagine, this would have certain mass. Even the column would have certain mass. But can you imagine if you consider a single story building or for a matter of fact like you know multiple story building, most of the masses are situated where in a building? Can I say it would be at the floor level? Okay. And of course, you can say that there are also masses concentrated at the wall. But what do we do? We say that Half of the mass above and below the floor, I can just lump it at that floor level. Okay, so a representation for this single story uh, frame building would be something like uh, I take all the masses and lump it at here. Okay, this is just one way to represent it. Okay, now this system has mass, which is I'm assuming it to be here. Now if I apply a lateral load to this system, what will happen? The system would of course deform. Okay, so let us say the system deforms like this and the displaced position becomes something like this and this mass moves from here to here. Okay, and let us say this is the displacement with respect to original position. Okay, and the same would be the displacement of the mass. Okay, because this representation is inherently assumes that these columns and the beams are inextensible, actually, of course. Okay, so this is a uh, 
simplified representation or single degree of freedom representation okay now remember in general if you remember from your undergraduate okay if i had a frame like this how many degrees of freedom you uh, needed to represent this system well in this case let us say three degrees of freedom here and three degrees of freedom here now i could only reduce this system to a single degree of freedom system why because i assume if this is inextensible so this degree of freedom this degree of freedom would be same if columns are inextensible then there are no vertical degrees of freedom here okay and if i assume that this beam here or the slab here cannot be bent okay then i can say that i can represent this with a single degree of freedom without any rotation here okay so i can say that right so in this case uh, let me just redraw it or basically when i redraw it i will get the same figure what you see above okay so what did we talk about we have a mass here okay if i am applying a force it is deforming so i have a stiffness and there is also a third component so what did we talk what did we discuss we have mass we have a stiffness and there is a third component which is called damper now can you imagine if you pull a elastic system or like you know a flexible system okay and let it vibrate would it keep on vibrating for infinity okay in reality it is not possible okay so while for some system that idealization is assumed in reality what happens if you pull any system there is always some dissipation of energy and if you let a system vibrate what happens after some time any system would come to rest okay so it won't keep on vibrating infinitely it would ultimately come to rest okay so damping basically represents the energy dissipation in the system due to which the amplitude of vibration of a system reduces to zero over a time okay so we have three components of this system okay and we are going to see how we can derive the mathematical formulation for each of these three components okay so let us see how do we do that okay so the first representation we are going to talk about is actually for the stiffness okay now if you consider any system that can be deformed okay for example i mean the simplest one is what if i take a spring like this there is no mass here okay so just keep that in mind and if i apply a force which is the force in the spring you know that it will deform right and how is the let us say displacement in this is related to fs can i write fs is equal to k of spring times u okay so this relationship you know okay nothing uh, complicated about this one similarly for any other type of a structure as well for example let me take an example of a cantilever beam okay so what i have here is actually a cantilever beam and when i apply a load let us say fs here you know that it will deform okay and what is this uh, deformation here if you remember from your uh, structural analysis class can i say u is fs l q by ei okay you remember this relationship right okay or i can write it in other way saying i fs equal to 3 ei by lq times u okay which is 
similar to this relationship except now here my stiffness is represented by this quantity 3 ei by l cube okay and this i can do for like you know different type of structure for example i can do it for let us say simply supported b okay i can do it for uh, you, you know i mean i can do it for fixed supported b okay i can do it for different type of system and then equivalently i can derive this relationship okay so this is clear that when we apply a load and a uh, on a deformable body and it deform then the system can be idealized through a spring okay with a stiffness and for which the applied force the applied force fs and the displacement u is related through this relationship okay okay if that is clear let us come back to our example that we were discussing the single frame building here okay so this is what we are talking about in this situation i am not considering any mass okay okay so mass is not considered here just forget about mass for time being it is uh, not important i mean if you look at it mass is an is it coming in picture in any of the steps here no so let us just forget about the mass now what is happening if i apply a force on this it will deform Okay, or let me redraw it again. It will deform. Let us say this is the force applied is Fs. Okay, it due to this applied force, there is a deformation of U. And if you take the free body diagram here, how does it look like if you have the system here? Okay, the resisting force is whatever force you apply here. Okay, now. We have to find out how is this force related to this displacement. Okay, so we have to find out this Ks factor here. Now, if the system is elastic, we saw that we can directly find out using the principle of a structural analysis. Okay, so Ks could be Ti by L cube depending upon what kind of uh, setup you are considering. Okay, so. For a small deformation, usually this relationship is linear. Okay, so if I let us say draw Fs versus U, it use it would be usually linear. However, you can imagine if you keep applying the force or keep increasing the force, there would come a point at which the system would start to break or yield okay whatever you want to say and then it won't remain linear there would be energy dissipation and then you have to consider the system something like a non-linear system okay pardon this uh, surface pen here it is not giving good result in the diagonal lines which is okay all right, so uh, we do see that uh, the structures are actually like you know, in general non-linear however for this structural dynamics course we would only be consider considering linear relationship of the force versus deformation okay so fs ks times u okay only linear relationship would be considered okay all right now let us consider two extreme cases for this frame here okay to extreme cases by what i mean let me say in this case in one case okay this is very flexible okay so that the modulus of rigidity is zero okay and then again you apply the force and in the second case it is very very rigid so that modulus of this one is equal to infinity okay now if you apply the force and if you are asked to find out that tell me what would be the equivalent stiffness of this system how would you do that as you can imagine if there is no flexure rigidity here 
so if the column wants to bend here there is nothing to prevent that rotation okay so it would be just the displacement you applying like this and the columns or let's try it again here very good column looking like simply like this because there is no restraint at rotation here okay so it would look like something like this okay in this case because it is so rigid these columns cannot rotate at these points of rotation so the deformed shape would look like this okay so it would simply become case of a cantilever here so two cantilevers here in this case it's also cantilever but it is restrained again rotation okay so basically uh, this look like cantilever which is not restrained against rotation this is a cantilever which is restrained again rotation okay so if you remember from your structural analysis okay what is the displacement or uh, u here u is nothing but fs and as we have discussed above fs l cube by tei and here this u is fs l cube by 12 ti okay now there are two columns in each of these so ks for this system would be 2 times 3 ei by l cube and for it would be 2 times 12 ei by l cube okay now in reality you can imagine that the situation would be somewhere in between okay and for that there is a way to derive the relationship like you know in terms of let us say ratio of uh, flexure rigidity of the beam and column what the values are but we are not going to get into that okay i'm just demonstrating you two very simple cases okay all right so this is how the force and displacement displacement relationship would be in this case okay now let us come after discussing the stiffness okay okay so in this case we have discussed stiffness now let us discuss damping in the system the second component okay so we are going to talk about damping okay and as i mentioned before damping is the process okay so damping is the process through which okay, through which amplitude of a vibrating system diminishes so through which amplitude of a vibrating system diminishes okay okay now you can imagine if you have a building and if you apply a load there are various ways in which the energy could be dissipated if you apply you know the displacement to a system okay and damping represents here in this case especially what we are discussing uh, you have to think what are the different type of mechanisms so uh, let us say one mechanism could be repeated elastic straining okay so if you have repeated elastic straining leads to energy dissipation due to friction at the molecular level okay. this is one way other could be if you let us say uh, have uh, a building let us say it's a steel building or other type of let us say it's a wood building or any type of building at joints uh, you could have like you know bolted connection or you could have like you know welded connection if it's a uh, let us say wooden building again you could have different type of connections so the second could be friction at joints and connection of a building okay so joints and connections okay what uh, other mechanism you think could be there okay 
देर कुड बी फिक्शन बिटवीन स्ट्रक्चरल एंड नॉन स्ट्रक्चरल कॉम्पोनेट सो फ्रिक्शन बिटवीन स्ट्रक्चरल एंड नॉन स्ट्रक्चरल कॉम्पोनेट्स ओके इफ इट्स अ कॉन्क्रीट बिल्डिंग देर कुड ऑल्सो बी इफ यू अप्लाई अ डिफॉर्मेशन लाइक यू नो बैक एंड फोर्थ देर कुड बी क्लोजिंग एंड ओपनिंग ओके सो लेट अस से नॉट लेट अस से ओपनिंग एंड क्लोजिंग क्लोजिंग ऑफ माइक्रो क्रैक्स so many of these mechanisms involve you know friction and generation of heat due to which the energy is actually lost okay and that's why you cannot have in reality a perfectly a perfect elastic system okay you would have non conservative forces okay now let us say we have to model this we have to model damping now you can imagine for the simple mathematical formulation modeling each of these technique okay is very very difficult and it is not required you know i mean uh, if i want to get into that much of detail then uh, you know i mean uh, i won't do it for just a simple problem like this okay so how do we do what do we do we combine all these damping mechanism okay into a simple mechanism and we are saying that we are going to represent all these energy dissipation uh, mechanism through a damping called viscous damping okay so viscous damping is there viscous damping as you can imagine uh, it is also like you know called like you know viscous damper uh, what happens in viscous damping let us say i have a cylinder in which i have a piston like this and there are like you know fluid in each of these or okay so fluid in uh, each side of this piston now what happens if you can imagine if you push this piston the fluid will flow around these orifices okay so there would be resisting force okay now can you imagine if you try to push it very quickly the force would be more okay and if you try to push it very slowly then the force would be almost zero it is like in real life let us take an example you have a fluid and then you try to push a flat object onto the fluid if you do it very slowly it won't offer any resistance okay but if you try to do it very quickly it offers lot of resistor so a damping force can i say it is proportional to not the displacement because there are displacement in both cases where the whether you apply slowly or whether you apply uh, suddenly however it is better correlated to velocity okay so the damping force is proportional to uh velocity and the coefficient of proportionality is called damping coefficient and represented by c times u not so this is called linear viscous damping mechanism so although in a building or in a structure or in a system in reality the nature of energy dissipation or damping is not actually viscous damping it is just mathematically easy to combine all these energy dissipation in a single mechanism and represent it through viscous damping and then we will see in a later chapter how do we get this viscous damping coefficient or how do we get equivalent viscous damping to represent all the system okay but right now this is the uh, formulation or this is the expression for viscous damper so you will see that later what we are going to uh, do we are going to represent a damper or viscous damper mechanism through this notation here which basically like you know a simplified notation of this damper here 
okay so i hope that is clear okay so now again let us come down to the uh, this one which we are considering so if i have to just represent the energy dissipation mechanism in this frame building what i'm going to do i'm going to connect a damper between two points of this structure so let us say i don't have anything i don't have mass i don't have stiffness okay just to represent damper i have something like this here okay and the force in this damper can be represented with f sorry i have been missing this should be fd here okay it should be fd force in damping okay. so if you consider if we apply a force fd here the resisting force in this frame would be what consider something like this can i cut the structure uh, at some point okay here it would be fd same force would be applied here okay so this is the damping mechanism that we consider okay so once uh, that is clear now let us get into the third part which is the equation of motion okay so the equation of motion that we are going to set up okay. so let us see how do we set up the equation of motion so as you know our sim uh, system was something like a frame here On which there was this mass right here and then to represent all damping mechanism i have this damper so this is how i'm representing mathematically or like you know uh, including all the components of a dynamic system okay now if i apply an external force here okay what my goal here is to find out the equation of motion for this mass or for this single degree of freedom system subject to this external force pt okay now there are two ways in which we could do it and this comes from like you know if you have already done a uh, course in engineering mechanics okay what do we do if i have to set up equation of motion either i can consider newton's second law which is basically what resultant force resultant of all the force on a body is basically mass times acceleration okay so i can use newton's second law all right so as per newton's second law okay i have to first draw the free body diagram okay so let us consider equilibrium of this mass and i'm going to cut my system here okay so what are the forces acting on this uh, system if you consider here i have force pt which is acting here okay and if i cut my system as we saw previously whatever the stiffness of this system is i can write fs times as into u and remember that there is this damper here as well okay so this damper here the force in this damper would be fd okay uh, is represented by c times u naught and then there is this mass here okay now what is the resultant on this mass m here it is pt which is and uh, remember that this is actually deforming something like this here okay so i'm assuming that it is deforming by amount u so pt okay minus fs minus fd the stiffness force and the damping force this is the net resultant force this mass should be equal to mass times acceleration which is m times u double dot and if i bring it on the same side i can write it something like mu double dot plus fd plus fs is equal to pt okay and if i consider this to be a linear uh, made up of linear viscous damper and a linear system uh, the stiffness is linear then i can write it this as 
cu dot and then fs as ku they should be equal to pt so this is my equation of motion okay i'll keep coming back to this equation of motion again and again so many times in the subsequent chapters you will see that how to solve it how to uh, use this for like you know undamped system and damped system okay so this is the equation of motion okay for a single degree of freedom system for a sdof system so newton's second law was one way to do it there is other way you can do it and that is uh, basically using uh, dynamic equilibrium of the mass okay so i need to use the dynamic equilibrium of the mass so remember till now you have only considered in your engineering mechanics as statics okay you did not consider dynamic equilibrium and here we use what is called d alambert's principle okay which you might also know through the terminology called pseudo force which says that if a mass is accelerating okay i can apply an inertial force on the mass which is opposite to the direction of acceleration okay and then solve the equilibrium of the system as a simple static problem so what it says in this case again i will again have the same forces fs i will have here fd okay due to this damper okay this pt is here and this mass i will say i am going to apply an inertial force f fi okay which is opposite to the direction of motion and then i am going to write it as fi plus fs plus fd and that should be equal to pt okay so i did not use that resultant force should be equal to mass time acceleration i just apply on the mass and opposite equal uh, basically force that is opposite to the direction of motion and this is equal to fi is basically equal to mass times acceleration and then i can have fs and fd let me just bring it here we have cu naught ku should be equal to p of t okay so again remember it is up to you which approach do you want to follow okay i have found out that for a multi sometimes complicated problem in multi degree of freedom system uh, this second approach might work out to be better but you know i mean uh, you need just need to be consistent both of them would give you similar uh, result okay so remember setting up the equation of motion is the first step in a dynamic dynamic structural dynamics problem okay and you need to be very accustomed how to do that okay so we have done it through an example of a frame structure you could have like you know different type of structure like you no know, you could have one of the examples that we just saw here uh, let me see again uh, okay uh, that four of the examples that i showed you and you could uh, set up the equation of motion for those examples all right okay now after we are done with this remember the same thing mass damping and this stiffness okay can be obtained considering a representation which is a simpler representation okay a mass spring and damper representation okay and this the mass spring damper representation have been typically used in uh, courses like uh, mechanical vibration or physics okay so the formulation that i have described till now considering in mind that this is intended for uh, structural uh, engineers but uh, the spring mass damper is a uh, more commonly adopted representation in mechanical vibrations and like you know uh, other physical uh, problems okay so we'll going to discuss that uh, representation as well okay